And welcome back, Learn to Code Nation. This time, we're going to wrap up this series, uh, or at least I think this will be the wrap up anyway. In the future, that will tell. But what I'm going to drive at today is the Azure Key Vault. Now, up to this point, we've found different ways of loading environment variables, command line variables, uh, you know, user secrets, uh, multiple JSON files based off environments, all that's awesome. But ultimately, we need to get this thing into production. And in production, we're going to use the Azure Key Vault. And so if we think about the Azure Key Vault, we should think about it as a big user secrets file. Okay. And so to make this work, we're not going to be able to test this locally. So I'll show you the Azure Key Vault uh, and the uh, web job and all that kind of stuff uh, later after we get through the code here. But if we take a peek here, this is the key here, configuration.azure key vault. And then you have configuration command line, environment variables, JSON, user secrets. That's all our staggered work and because this is the part of a bigger series, right? You can go back and watch those previous videos and uh, they'll explain some of these other pieces of the puzzle. Uh, but if we dive into the program here, whoops, and we take a peek at what changed from user secrets. So here we, we load the, the two app settings, JSON files, the environment variables, the command line variables, the user secrets. All right, we've staggered all that. But ultimately, if we're not in local execution, we actually need to go and connect to our Azure Key Vault. Now, this is a way of connecting to the Azure Key Vault. It is the only one I'm going to cover in this series. Um, you can technically connect to an Azure Key Vault with certificates. Uh, that's another option. But since we're running this web job in Azure, we don't need that. We can actually use the, uh, the token provider, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make our our connection effectively right to our key vault client by using a setting that we have in the app settings this is a new app setting so let's take a look at our uh, app settings.json and actually it's the app settings.development.json and you'll notice the app settings has another object key vault and then called dns name so i have a key vault set up out there uh, this is deployed and running uh, in my Azure account, um, and so I have a key vault called learn to code .vault .azure .net. Okay, and so what's happening is we're going to make a connection to that particular key vault, and we're going to pull in the values specifically, specifically out of the secret manager in the key vault, and it uses a particular scheme uh, as far as naming, just like you know in the past you've seen us use. Uh, a syntax here for environment variables you'll see you know a syntax here for command line arguments same syntax actually for user secrets right and so in just a minute we're gonna cut away we're gonna look at Azure and we're gonna explain that exactly how that works I'm gonna show you a log uh, that shows you that it actually works all right here we are in uh, my Azure portal and here's a resource group with some learn to code resources and the one I'm going to pull up real quick right now is the key vault here. And if we take a peek at this, we have a secrets settings, right? And look at this, app settings, dash, dash, first setting. And let's take a peek at it, right? Let's actually open this guy up. And we'll open up this version of it. Give it a second here. There we go. And let's just take a look at the value it is key vault value so we would expect when logging the app settings out then from the actual web job that's running in Azure that we would end up with key vault value right that would be our expectation so if we go back here and let's get back to the web jobs and I'm going to pull up that web job for you now this web job I simply published uh, directly from Visual Studio. I won't cover that in this video. Maybe we'll set up a whole nother series on getting stuff into Azure, right? And how you have to set things up because there's other things you need to know. You have to set up actually some um, some stuff to get it to where the web job can talk to the key vault, stuff like that. So I think maybe we'll cover that in a different series. But if we take a look here um, 
at the, and actually I meant to go to the uh, app service. Sorry about that. And we take a look at the web jobs. Here we have one that's going to pull up called Azure Key Vault, which is effectively the console application that you saw in Visual Studio earlier, right? And you can actually trigger this, right? You can you can click Run um, because it's a triggered job. If I can get my there, we go. And yes, and so that'll kick it off. And let's take a look at the logs. There we go. And what we'll find is if we take a look at this log, okay, you'll notice that we have a key vault settings with the DNS name, right? Because that was part of the development uh, .json file. But notice the first setting value is actually key vault value. So we did in fact connect to our key vault. We pulled the value from our key vault. And we in fact executed this console application uh, in Azure. Connected to Azure and, and making the override like it was supposed to. So that's how easy it is to use the Key Vault as long as you're deployed in Azure, right? If you're deployed somewhere else, there's some other techniques that we may have to cover in a different series. I hope this has been helpful. I hope at least it'll help some people that are all inter, you know, connected in Azure uh, allow you to go ahead and grab those Key Vault values for your. Um, for your user secrets and stuff like that um, in production. So thanks again. I look forward to hanging out with you next time. Until then, happy coding.